Okay. All right. My name is Carrie, and uh, I get to teach you about transubstantiation. Can you all say transubstantiation? Transubstantiation. <laughs> wow, that is a super huge word. Okay, but we're gonna we're gonna learn about it, and then we're also we also get to make a craft. So I'm gonna start by reading a book that's gonna help us understand, and then we'll make a craft to talk about it. Okay. This is called The Weight of of a Mass, and it is A Tale of Faith by Caitlin, with a really hard last name. I'm not sure how to say that one. <laughs> okay, and I will show you the pictures after I read the page. So, once upon a time, a king betrothed to a queen from a faraway land consented to be married in a cathedral, even though he knew that only a handful of old women would attend the Holy Mass. It was not that his subjects wished the royal couple ill or that they would not find their own ways of celebrating the union, but the king's people had grown cold and careless about practicing their faith. So a bigger, fancier church is called a cathedral. Isn't it beautiful? The king and the queen were betrothed. That means they were going to get married there, okay? But was there going to be a lot of people attending their wedding? Yeah. Why not? What did the book say? Why will people not come to their mass, their wedding mass? Did anybody hear? It said the people's heart, the people had grown cold and careless in the practice of their faith. That means they kind of were turning away from God and they weren't going to church very much. Okay, so that's kind of sad. So, and you know what? That's kind of happening a little bit in our world. So I'm super excited to be here with you guys because you're the, you're the next people who are gonna run our church, right? So a while before the ceremony, a ragged old woman shuffled into the kingdom's most prosperous bake shop. Subjects soaring in high spirits and decked in finery whisked past her, carrying away the finest confections, of lo confections and loaves of bread. The baker lifted elegant pastries and arranged them in lacy boxes, which he tied on bows. His son was a kindly boy, guarded, guarded the royal wedding cake from children's probing fingers, all while describing how he and his father had erected the cake. So now we're in a bake shop, right? And what special cake did they make? A wedding cake. A wedding cake for who? Not just anybody. The king and the queen. The king and the queen, right. Finally, it was the widow's turn in the crowded shop. For the love of God, she begged of the baker, if you will give me a crust of stale bread, I will offer my mass for you today. The baker's son spun on his heels to fetch the bread reserved for children who fed the royal swans, but his father growled, this woman shares the disease from which you suffer and your mother before you. If I didn't keep you busy here, you'd be on your knees at church with the likes of her. So the what did the woman ask for? Um, bread. Yeah, she said just an old stale crust of bread. She doesn't have any money, but she's hungry. And so the son automatically, because he's very kind, he wanted to help her out. He went to go get some bread, and the father said, uh-uh. Is that very nice? Mm -hmm. No, not very nice at all. He said, oh, you would, if I didn't keep you busy, the father keeps his son busy working so he can't attend church. And said, oh, your mother used to go, and you'd be at church with the likes of this beggar woman. Is that okay to go with, to church with someone like that? Yeah. yeah, it would be. But not according to dad, the baker. A hush fell over the crowd. The baker peered over the counter. You prosper, you propose to hear a mass for me? He challenged the old woman. I'd rather hear the jingle of your coins. But I haven't a shilling, the widow whispered. Then I haven't any bread, the baker shot back. Father, the son protested. She asked in the name of God. Then let God give her bread, the baker exclaimed. Yeesh. Not very nice. She said, what would she offer for him if he would give her some bread? Did anybody hear that part? Yeah, go ahead. Or Claire? Her mass and offering the pork praises in 
Yeah, she would pray for him during the Mass. Is that a pretty special gift to give somebody? Yeah. Is it more valuable than money? I think so. Jesus is way more valuable than money. The widow turned to leave, but the baker had not finished taunting her. What's another word for taunting? Do you know? Mocking. What's that? Mocking. Mocking. That's a great word. Mocking or teasing. Yeah. Sometimes like kind of like rubbing it in their face. Perfect. You guys are good at vocabulary. The widow turned to leave, but the baker had not finished taunting her. Let us see how much bread I would owe you, he said. He tore a tiny corner off the finest tissue paper, so really lightweight paper, and he wrote one mass on the tissue paper. Okay, so he's writing one mass on a tiny piece of paper. He's gonna, he said, let's see how much bread I would owe you for this. So he put it in his balance pan, and there it says one mass, and he put in a piece of bread on the other side of his balance pan, okay? Let's see what happens. Which one do you think is worth more? The mass or the bread? Mass. Okay, let's see what happens. The baker held the tiny piece of paper, and with a ceremonious flare, he laid the wispy scrap on into the resting tray of his brass scale. Then he flipped a slice of old bread onto the other tray. He blinked, confused. The bread side had not dropped to lift up that very light paper. Impossible, the baker exclaimed, place, placing a marzipan apple into the, onto the bread side. Still the tray holding the paper stayed down. The baker piled layered cake onto the tray, but it did not tip the scale. He stacked his best cherry-topped cupcakes into the balanced scale, but they didn't make a difference either. Brushing past his son, he swept heavy filled chocolates into a box and put them on the scale. Still, the scale did not budge when he placed those on it too. He arranged dozens of poppy seed cakes, two dozens of rolls onto the pile. The paper outweighs the goods, the baker exclaimed. He's baffled. He you cannot... shouldn't do that because now he owes the <laughs> uh huh. You're oh. right, and it it's not even tipping it? yet, so he could still put more, and it's not equal to the weight of the mass. Wait, wait, wait. So the lady just gave him stuff for free. Uh huh. Well, no, not for free. What is she offering? Mass. Yeah, she's gonna pray for him. Do you think he might I think have a conversion? God making it stay down. <laughs> you think, well, of course it is, because that's who's present at our Mass, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Your guys are really smart. The Royal Council of Weights and Measure tested the scale just last week, the baker protested, but something's gone wrong with it. The baker's son lifted the tiny scrap of paper off the scale, and a gasp went up when the baked goods came crashing down. So he took the mass off the scale and it went boom, just oh. like that. <laughs> um, a gasp went up. Yep, everyone began speaking at once. What can this mean, they asked each other. The crowd quieted to watch as the baker emptied the heavy tray and tested the scale with all of its weights, even those smaller than a game piece. The scale responded to every change floating up and down. The scale is correct, the baker said. Of course it is. I'm an honest man. So he took it apart and he's just trying to figure out what in the world is going on. And when he took off the mask, everything worked just right. It's because God is. Yep. Compelled by the events, clients rushed to the doors, calling in more witnesses from the street. They're like, come on in, you gotta see this. The bakers addressed his son, pile it high. This time, turn the scale around so that the trays are switched. The breads, buns, candies, and cakes brought their side down with a satisfying thud. Now, the baker said, he took the snippet of the paper and put it in the tray. We'll see the truth, he said. So instead of having the cakes over here and the mass over here, he took off the mass, moved the baked goods to this side, 
He's gonna put the mass over here. Raise your hand what you think's gonna happen to the baked goods. Move your hand and show me. What are the baked goods gonna do? I think you're right, let's see. Now we'll see the truth. Look at how piled high this is. And that tiny mass on the other side. You shouldn't have done that. No. Because now <laughs> that's a way he gets it all for free. Yeah. <laughs> no sooner did the tissue touch the shiny brass tray than it lifted the opposite one. But I don't understand, the baker muttered as he ran to fetch his fine, freshest donuts. Yummy. He piled fruit cakes and cream cakes and berry tarts and poached pears. This can't be, he cried as he plastered on plum, plum pudding and candied fruits and almond confetti and crushed walnuts. The mass intention weighs more than these, the sun marveled. Wait, what? Where is it? Oh, well, we can't. Oh, it's back here in the background. And they just keep bringing food and piling it on. You just give it a little. Yeah, they're just giving her more food. They are. So, so then your shop's not going to have any food. Yeah. <laughs> it gets better. Wait. The baker was beside himself with bewilderment. He is just like mind blown. He turned to his son. Don't, don't think I didn't know you would abandon the baking trade to become a priest, he warned. And don't think any of this will influence me. He took a big, deep breath. Bring me the royal wedding cake. As the son's... The baker's son rolled the cart, the cake's cart through the crowd. It parted respectfully, lest the prize confection get damaged. So here's the royal wedding cake. Oh, it's like it's like sliding to the side. Don't eat the That is your mortgage. On the count of three, the baker ordered his son, "Help me get it onto the scale. This will put an end to that nonsense." One. Two, three. The wedding cake teetered on the top of the pile. The paper on which the baker had written the words, one mass, had, hadn't even fluttered. The baker and his clients stood dumbfounded. Yay! <laughs> oh. Wait, now we can make rods. Oh, yep. Yeah, Jared. What what if Sam Peter is giving all the food even the wedding cake? He's gonna have to remake the wedding cake. You think? Just then the cathedral bell began tolling the call of the royal wedding mass. God's power is like unstoppable. It is. The sun's baker stood over the piece of paper just staring at it. Can you imagine? If you witnessed this, when he lifted it from the scale, hands surged forward to rescue the wedding cake as things beneath it crashed down with a weighty clang. A man went out into the street and took up the Ave Maria and took up, yeah, the bells were tolling. Other clients who had intended to celebrate the royal wedding in diverse ways now filed out and processed towards the kingdom's great... Where are they all going to go now that they witness this miracle? To the church, church. To the cathedral, yes. One by one, they join the masculine voice in raising the lofty hymn. So, by witnessing this, all of these people had a conversion or a change of heart. They're all like, wow, mass is super important. We better go, right? Well, how are they going to eat all the food? <laughs> well, they left it because they decided eating Jesus' body and drinking his blood was more important than all the baked goods. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Did, that, did that lady get all the goodies? Let's, let's read. The stunned baker saw that the only customer left in his shop was the old widow. He made a gesture of putting everything at her disposal. Come every day, he told her. You will never go hungry again. The widow smiled and tucked only a thin piece of bread into her pocket. As the baker watched his son unbutton his white apron, the father sensed that one day the boy 
would exchange his white apron for a white collar. What does that mean, a white collar for his white apron? Oh, he would become a, a, priest. a priest, yes, because his son loves the Lord. The baker, his son, and the widow trailed the procession to the cathedral to offer mass with the monarchs. Amidst the singing and the exclamations of wonder and joy, the baker asked the old lady, why did you only take one slice when you could have anything and everything you wanted in my shop? I was ashamed to take more, the widow told him. Ashamed, the baker asked, but it was you who believed in God's power while the rest of us had grown cold. I was ashamed, the widow exclaimed, explained, because even though I had never given up going to mass, I asked you only for a crust of stale bread in exchange for it. You see, my friend, like you, I too do know the weight of a mass. So the cool part is, look at the baker, the widow changed his heart that day too, right? Because they're all going to mass together now. She held up her end of the bargain. She wasn't going to take everything in her shop. Great story, huh? Okay, so we believe that Jesus is present. So all our eyes see is this tiny little host, but the weight of the mass is so much more, right? Because who's, who is this after the consecration is prayed? Jesus. It is Jesus. So I'm just going to show you really quickly. Whoa. There's Jesus. Yeah. We are. You all get to That's make. That's what we're making. Does anybody know what this fancy, well, this one is just <laughs> um, pool noodles and pipe cleaners. But up in the church sometimes, Father puts Jesus in a big host in this beautiful golden vessel. Does anybody know what it's called? It's a nice job, Claire. It is. It's called a monstrance. Did you know that too, Thomas? So you get to make your very own monstrance today to remind you of the weight of the mass, that it really is Jesus in here, okay? So um, it's totally up to you. Um, you can choose to... Um, Amy wrapped um, some, they're silver and gold, and she wrapped it around the base of her monstrance. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but you can. And then I'm going to give you um, six pipe cleaners that we're going to cut in half, and um, you'll put it together. Question? I think it is heavy because it fell. <laughs> it might be. I will just try to leave it there so everybody can see, and then I will get start getting materials. How about um, 